viewers, this interview is going to be a little different. As we all know, today's world is rapidly developing. There are no strict boundaries between sectors. From biophysics to fintech, all sectors are interdisciplinary. Horizons are expanding and thus all sectors, all job profiles have become intertwined. Now there are some mad people who work as hard as entrepreneurs, who require all the same skill sets as entrepreneurs, but aren't entrepreneurs per se. Let's call them sociopreneurs. The only slight difference is the sociopreneurs create a value, not necessarily in monetary terms, but by bringing a change, a positive impact in the society. Today we have one such sociopreneur with us, more precisely an edupreneur, as his project is in the field of education. An edupreneur is basically an entrepreneur who works within the education sector. Edupreneurs lead with a 21st century education mindset and are known globally inside and outside of their classroom. Motivated, mission-driven, passionate, smart, with the potential to create something new, edupreneurs are game-changing innovators who are bursting with technology, ideas and creativity in the education sector. As entrepreneurs, they know that money may or may not follow, yet they choose to pursue the endeavor for the greater good. Let's continue with the interview. Hello everyone and welcome to KYE Talk. I am Sonal Ambekar, your host for this interview. Know Your Entrepreneur is a digital platform where we talk to several entrepreneurs who tell us why they chose not to be stuck to the regular 9 to 5 and went, went ahead to do something different. They went ahead and changed their passion. Today's interview is going to be a little different. In this interview, we won't be talking to an entrepreneur but an edupreneur, which is education, a person who is enthusiastic in the education sector. A passionate enthusiast of teaching and learning, Mr. Akash Rao. Hi, Akash. Hello, Sonal. Good evening. So, uh, to introduce him, his key skills include pedagogy, child psychology, training and development, counseling, life coaching, and human uplifting. He has been a teacher of English, humanities, psychology, management studies, human skills, communication skills, soft skills. And he's also played a, a huge role. Uh, he also takes on the roles and responsibilities of inclusive education, which is a term for no discrimination against ch kids of special needs, if I'm not wrong, Akash. Yeah. So, Akash, uh, he, I need to mention this, that he is a learning leader and international teacher trainer, also a thought leader. So we have a huge profile here, guys. Do continue to watch this interview to get to know more about progressive learning and, and how the education system here on can, you, you know, the scope of development in the education sector. Hi, Akash. It's amazing to have you here on this platform with us. Thank you, Sonal. It's my pleasure to be interviewed by your team and like you being here to like question me and get to know more about my work. So Akash, tell us about yourself and what motivated you to be become an educator, an educator. Okay, so a uh, very good question to begin with. Uh, if I can go back to my flashback when I was a kid, I would say uh, five or six years old, uh, what fascinated me the most was school and my teachers and studying and books. And since then, um, I had a dream that whenever I grow up and if I want to become something, which we all think of becoming, I would become a teacher. And I indulged myself into books, uh, playing with the chalks, playing with kids around as if it's a school scenario and those role plays. And that gave me my... Uh, and as I kept growing, I realized that it was not just a play that I was enjoying, but I'm really passionate about working in the education fraternity. And that's how I landed into teaching, I would say, in 2006. And immediately once I finished my schooling, I got myself engaged into tutoring, working with some NGOs and some coaching institutes. And that's how I started developing my passion towards uh, teaching, learning, children, and the overall education system. Right. And I would say it is 14 years now that I'm into education, and the journey has been really great. And the, the small introduction that you gave at the beginning, uh, that I started as a teacher of English, 
moving on to humanities and then psychology i expected myself to get a varied experience in the last uh, couple of years and i guess i did justice to my profession and the journey started as a teacher and now i am proudly uh, associated with a school in north india as a principal and along with that i also run a project which is called borderless education Yes. and i will tell you more about it in the interview yes. that we are going to do now like like you mentioned uh, as a young child as kids we all used to play a game called teacher teacher we all posed very much and we all had our teddy bears lined up with our students but the difference yeah. that i can see here was you actually followed it it was your passion to be a teacher to make a difference because because uh, ever since you know us us scriptures a scripture they they talk a lot about a guru a good guru and the impact a good guru can have on on his students and basically yes. all all the uh, mythologies that we know about ramayana or the mahabharata mm. a guru has always played a huge role in 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 how the story unfolds in how it progresses very much yeah so being a being a tutor is really important for development i see because with progressive time and with progressive technology it is important that you have someone to teach you how exactly to adapt to newer things how to go about it in the right way very much right and uh, much. since you mentioned yes. borderless education which is your social project please tell us more about yes. it and how has this social project changed you as a person <laughs> okay okay so borderless education is my baby that's how i associate with it and as the as the name uh, as the title itself suggest that education has no demarcations education has no borders right. and education is free flowing it's just right. like water and or it is just like air it it just keeps flowing the demarcations the borders that we humans have created on the landmass are for various reasons and i personally feel if we can get away from those borders and if the education fraternity in the country all over the world can come together as one whole system we can make a lot of change to the existing times and in the near future that we are going to experience so borderless education cropped my mind in 2018 early 2018 and i was just sitting one fine day and i was thinking of my journey now on like okay i got into teaching i am an educator i have a vision in terms of what i want to uh, do for the education fraternity but i was still not getting the click and while i was reading about the uh, lack of opportunities uh, hundreds and thousands and lakhs of students to not have around the world and along with that even the teachers uh that did sadden me it was more it, it was more disappointing to see the benefits we have as students of a modern society in india or as educator uh, in a city like mumbai there are so many others in the education fraternity who are not blessed right. with the same opportunities and i realized why not do something for them why not why not come up with a concept where i could get associated with them and i can take the leap forward and at the end of the day what does education teach us education teaches us to change education teaches us to adapt with times and education teaches us to to just to just see the world in a different perspective right and that's what borderless education does it connects with the education fraternity so when i talk about education fraternity it includes schools the stakeholders at schools the teachers and the students in india and outside india and the purpose is to empower the purpose is to uplift the purpose is to grow together right and i would say it has been 2 years now and uh, it is going on successfully i am associated with so many schools so many educators uh, so many children around the world now that i i i get the sense of accomplishment that yes I feel really blessed and proud that I am a teacher. I am an educator, and I am not something else in 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 my present time. Yeah, like you said that um, you kind of uh, see uh, it's the education fraternity that you work with, which includes the principal, yeah. the school, 
the stakeholders the teachers so uh, for yeah. a teacher it is important to you know change his or her teaching style as the time progresses or as there is a progress in the society because uh, like before like like we were talking and you told me that before we used to learn everything out of our textbook but yeah. now that needs to change because now it needs to be Very more about the practical knowledge yeah. right so so please please enlighten us on that how how you think the teaching should develop since mm-hmm. what we have experienced and what the students now on in the future would need what do you think okay so my personal uh, my personal mindset or my personal take on what education should be okay. education should be a balance of content and context if if the education system is 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 completely based on content knowledge <laughs> and it lacks the application part it lacks the contextualization the content is going to be uh, futile like yeah. students will never know what are they going to do with that content in a long run it's as simple as i give you a set of ingredients yeah. and i just tell you to cook without having any background of what can be cooked with the set of ingredients you will be lost you would experiment you would do something and when we call it as an experiment not all experiments pass there are so many experiments which fail right. so for me personally education is not an experiment rather than experimenting with the lives of these children in the future we have to be very concrete we have to be very clear what are we providing them right now and if we are very sorted in that terms i guess we will be developing a set of generation which will be independent which will be lifelong learners and they will know what is the purpose of their life in a long run so sadly seeing i won't i won't talk about any curriculum particularly this i can say is a conflict between the mindsets of teachers as you clearly said we need to shift that paradigm right. what is my role as as a teacher in the class come on that word teacher itself is so outdated i find at times we are not there to teach yeah. we are there to facilitate we are there to guide we are there to mentor we are there to inspire we are there to motivate the children right. if my learners are not independent if my learners do not have the curiosity to learn my presence in that class is just uh, is just to is just to provide them everything on a platter and is life going to be the same no it's not going to be the same and when it comes to teaching and learning has and contextualization as i mentioned is really important because without setting a context of why it is done in a particular way and just following what are we teaching or what are we learning the base is going to be really fragile and it is going to be uh, delicate and it might not bear the fruits as we expect them to be hold on akash okay there's some unstability i don't know if it's yeah. the connection or what is it i could see my image has could you hear me you clearly can you hear me but your voice is clear yeah yeah now yeah your voice is clear you know why the internet is so poor okay even continue we'll edit this part out i just don't want any uh, you know sad interruptions in between not a problem is is my video lagging again because to me your it appears to be lagging प्रॉब्लम the statement that you made about teachers and the gap between the you know enhancement in the society that happened that needs to be covered up the teachers cannot mm-hmm. be the 
Uh, you know the traditional teacher that we were that we were once teaching right See, out. If of I if I give you an example now, uh, for uh, like what's happening right now, Sonal. Since March, everything has got digitalized. Right. So the ones who were tech savvy knows how to do their lessons online. But the ones who were not tech savvy, right. they knew their content, but they they they, they never thought of upgrading their yeah. other okay. skills as a teacher. And then that 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 backfired them. in a in a in a in a bad manner bad manner right? so that is something i want to say that every day as a teacher we need to upgrade ourselves we need to keep learning and yeah. if i am not a lifelong learner as an educator am i going to transfer that same mindset in my learners or am i going to create another set of individuals who just come to school to get their grades and marks and certificates absolutely well sir and uh, like yeah the new education policy which is goes which the government will be applying which includes uh, you know uh, minors and majors like like it's there in the education system of god so what you said about concept and context as a child when i was in school i did not understand why i was studying some parts of algebra geometry because i thought i'm never going to use it in my life on earth so why am exactly. i learning this i don't feel like and that is was was a huge demotivator for me to study it to understand it and it felt useless to me i was very interested in very science, much so i had i was learning the concept and willingly understanding the context but i struggled hmm. with math same then with history for me I understood what you are talking about, but I did not understand why do they want me to learn about the past? How am I going to use exactly. this? Exactly. I did not understand. So the 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 question you are hitting right now, like you are you are you are redirecting to something that is very close to me. Um, it's always important for we uh, educators to tell our students, to tell our learners, to, or in general, always begin with why. the big question why is important yeah. to satisfy one's curiosity right. once you have done that tell them how are you going to approach that content that context and then come towards what it is right sadly in most of the education systems or in most of the educational setups we see people know what they are doing they how they are going to do it is a little bit dicey right. but why are they doing it the purpose behind it the reason behind is it's completely lost yeah. and most of the times people are like oh, oh that will be assessed in an exam but i'm like are you even aware that life itself is a big exam and there is no syllabus for that and there are no important questions for that and there is nothing like pass or fail go on in life exactly right. so understanding the understanding the context itself is such a big uh, rigidity in most of the people's mind that i personally feel they have still not got it clear uh, either why are they studying or most of the times teachers why are they even educating why are they even teaching right as 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 i can relate it to my own experience sometimes if i'm teaching a concept or a topic to my class if it is not clear to me why am i helping or why am i even giving a lecture on that topic right my students are going to be clueless they are like why is it just coming in exactly and there won't be any understanding yeah. there won't be any application and then it's just going to be a lesson full of flaws and i don't know what the product of that lesson would be yeah like you mentioned the so borderless yes yes yeah, very important application. for any person to know what they are learning and how they can apply it ahead in their life but that is something exactly. that has been missing in our education system because very much we only learn a concept we didn't really learn how to apply it in real life and that is very important and see it from and see it from the lenses of a real life situation right so borderless education majorly my target my aim i can say is to go reach out to educators reach out to stakeholders and tell them find your why first understand the purpose of being in that school then how are you going to take that purpose ahead and what is it that you are going to achieve through that purpose don't limit yourself to what because in a long run 
But what is not going to do a lot of benefit to you? Yeah. And like I mentioned, that the teachers sometimes they themselves don't know why they are teaching something, so they are unable to exactly. pass that knowledge on to the students that why they are learning that. Yeah. And so that and that gap that. will always and that gap will always create a lot of conflict. Of course. Right. Absolutely. So Akash, yeah. uh, like you, you mentioned, uh, the the fourteen years of uh, your journey of being an entrepreneur has been an interesting one. I'm mm-hmm. sure there must have been certain barriers and obstacles that you faced. And like, please share those with us and how did you overcome them? So one major barrier I would say, uh, Sonal, was um, acceptance. So when I call it as an acceptance, <laughs> it was more like I have got a set thought. in terms of okay this is something i want to do in the education fraternity and as i mentioned a while back not everyone is clear why are they in the field of education so i had that kind of a clash with uh, sometimes with the human resources i would say in terms of i uh, do you really know what you're doing in the class or do you really know uh, what are you doing as a teacher and if you're not open enough to learn or to uh, upgrade yourself i would say then that would take a toll on me and i was i used to get utterly disappointed by the way uh, some classes were conducted or uh, by the way in uh, uh, in some classes i would see teachers teaching the students and i was like no that is not what they need that is not what the time needs come on gone are those old days where you just open a textbook and read out a lesson and tell that the lesson is taught i mean like is it is it is it is it that exactly. easy teaching is not easy teaching is an art it also has got a science behind it Absolutely. and that is what you asked about what is pedagogy pedagogy is basically the way in which you you teach your teaching methodologies your uh, theories behind teaching yeah right. and if you don't know about that then i i personally would say uh, then education or teaching is not the right profession for you so that used to be my barrier that used to be my obstacle but i'm happy because of these um, experiences i could come to a conclusion i'm still finding that conclusion but i'm 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 somewhere nearby in understanding my uh, clarity around the field of education yeah so uh, acceptance as you said is something that we all deal with in our lives and it is very important for us to you know have a good mentor or a guide you know get through get through that even very important for us to you know be made aware of how sometimes the society or the ourselves find it difficult to you know that accept some things but then also it is very important for us to have those mentors or guides who would you know lead us through through that rough patch because we all hit that rough patch and we all uh, wish to have someone who could you know show us the right way show us the right direction and then Yes. that is exactly what teachers do they facilitate as you said so and and allow me to interrupt over here uh, sonal along with that it's also the rigidity with uh, which most of the educationist they call themselves educationist or they call themselves learners i'm talking about everyone in the education fraternity for that sake the rigidity overpowers them and if they don't have that growth mindset Right. in terms of changing with time i'm like you are going to be outdated dear and that's not going to help you right. and that is a kind of a conflict i always find i'm like why don't people upgrade themselves continuously right. and it's must that upgradation that updation come on even if you are using a device you are you you use an ipad you use a phone you use a laptop right. you upgrade the system right Right. you you are learning also has to get upgraded otherwise you are going to be outdated soon yeah right and sadly that's that's not that's not taking a forefront and because of that it's affecting the entire system i would right. say to some level right the education need not only be what the theory teaches it could be the way a teacher teaches approaches a subject and you know you know stir the curiosity of the kids make them interested in what they're learning Yes. Like, I would I would yes. like to mention what we learned in three days. We all have seen that movie. We have all have been inspired by the different way of thinking of uh, Rancho. If if you mm. see the movie, I don't know. Exactly. I'm like it that itself is an eye opener. 
for us. Right. It didn't question our education system. It did. Hmm. A yep. lot of us. But yep. also, yep. like the yes. people you said, the rigidity, the people who are stuck to their thoughts, they don't want to change, they don't want to upgrade themselves, they, they don't want to move on hmm. with, you know, the technology or the society. They, they start, stick to what they know and they, they, they don't want to know anything new. And then, if a person, if a teacher is not willing to learn something new, how will this person, how will this teacher share exactly. that knowledge with, with his or her students? Very important. Yep, that's true. That's so, very true. Um, yeah. Moving on with the next question. Uh, what are the factors, Akash, that you think uh, will help you achieve your aspirations as an educator? Okay, so the factors that will help me achieve my aspirations, if I'm not wrong. Right. Okay, so number one, as I said, acceptance. Uh, if I expect acceptance from others, I should also be open to acceptance uh, towards others. Like I should be able to accept change alongside. Right. Uh, one important thing I would like to mention over here, Sonal, is um, my philosophy. So. I'll, I'll start it from there. Personally speaking, I have coined my own educational philosophy as many other educators. I was going to ask and you about I believe, that educational philosophy. I'm glad that yeah, you... I, I, would link, I would link it over here because it, it very clearly links to my aspiration. It very clearly links to the factors yeah. that would help me uh, achieve my uh, plans. Yeah. So I am an educator because I wish to change the world around me. Yeah. Okay. And when I mention the world around me, I am also part of that world. So I am also changing with time. Right. Now, while I realize uh, what I hope to accomplish is limited, okay, it's, it's, it's bounded, I know education is where I can have the greatest impact. Yeah. I believe that the purpose of our human existence is to uplift uh, one another and that one another could be my fellow uh, teacher. It could could be my student, it could be anyone around me. Right. And education is the key to this upliftment. Right. Personally speaking, I, I love the fact that what one learns should never remain in the closed books. Rather, it should reach far and wide, uh, touching the lives of people who wish to be a part of this change. And as we always say, change is inevitable. Change yeah. is going to happen. We cannot stop it. So if we are in the system, why not help each other? Why not take each other together and uh, look towards a better future and share the planet in a more uh, harmonious manner and, uh, and, and, and hope, for a, hope for a better life? And I guess education can do that really well because it, it, it channelizes everyone's thoughts. Yeah. I think education is the only thing that will facilitate this kind of, you know, adaptability to change. Because yes. rigid mentality... And over here, here, let me let me add on, Sonal, uh, right education. Right education. The correct way to educate. Right. That is important. Oh, because just because education is not going to help. In the right manner, when it happens, it will help right. a lot. Right. So because we're talking about education, I want you to define education in your own form. How would you, because you're so passionate about it, how would you describe education if you want to say that this is what education stands for me? What would that be? Okay. So very nice question. No one asks this to me ever. So education for me, like people say, education is a right. It's a privilege. I would deny that. I'm like, no, education is not a right. Yes. Education is a collective responsibility. Okay, okay, it's the base of our social system. And when I mention it to be a collective responsibility, you are a part of this responsibility. I'm a part of this responsibility. Uh, uh, the teachers, the stakeholders, the parents, the learners themselves, okay. every individual is a part of this responsibility. Right. And in true terms, education can never be just within the four walls of a classroom, just it's being so dependent on one textbook. No, education is lifelong. And the more we keep learning, the more we keep exposing ourselves to the realities of the world, we will be better educated. We would be more literate. And that is how I define education. Yeah. 
it's a process it's a journey and it's and it's a responsibility it's a responsibility that very much it's a collective like responsibility cares with the, the the other person it's a it's a very much. responsibility only when we are yes. educated will we act civilized in this society which is so important in this era yes the so civilization mm. comes as it will come as we educate ourselves more right exactly yeah. exactly and just getting mere degrees and certifications is not education people who have got degrees but if they act insensibly exactly. immorally unethically i'm like is that even education and if that is education then did you learn these things and i'm like that 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 is like a shock to me that is like yeah. a kind of it yeah, startles me education should not only be the textbook lesson but lessons as to how to go about things in in your life also when when you learn something in a class say in a pretty class about say while playing something you learn so there should always be a lesson that you take from it that so you can apply it application yeah. and apply it ahead in your life that is how our yes. education system should, should actually work around that that yes. is how we should go about education instead of right yes. now as it is about concept like you said there is no context there is only concept there are a ton of concept but we do not and know mo- what there is not even concept. concept there is not even concept at times there is only content i would say so yeah. it goes like this it is content then there is a concept and then it builds upon a context context is far ahead i'm like people are still stuck at content i'm like they are not even opening the concept i'm like is that what your children are going to link it to and if yes for how long i'm like and that's a question mark right what a beautiful interview akash i'm on here now i want you to tell us what would your words of wisdom be for you know or your message to upcoming educators because it is really important that we have such revolutionizing educators to understand the value of education the, the value of giving out good knowledge or lessons yeah you know, teaching teaching the students not just you know theory but the lessons they will take ahead with them in their life it is very important yes. that we get those kind of educators for you know the next generation for our future mm. which which are mm. the kids that are still in school or will will be enrolled in the school now it's it's time will be enrolled in school yeah this is time that the education system you know gears up to how developing we are getting how we are facing up towards you know being a developed society yeah so What, what so my words of wisdom my words of wisdom come from my experience okay so i would i would bifurcate it further for you so number 1 jump into this pool of education only if you love it only if you think you can do justice to it if you think it's a kind of an alternative option for you please do not think of it because many lives are going to be dependent on your one decision okay and if you are coming into it then do do the work by all your heart and soul because those kids those children in the class look forward for your presence number 2 would be uh, have an open mind be open minded uh, be open to new ideas keep learning be progressive because you cannot be an outdated learner yourself because the moment you get outdated you are going to give birth to many outdated rigid or i would say um, the uh, children with lack of exposure and that's not what we need and third and the last thing would be consider yourself as change makers right because you are you are going to change something in the society and if you start believing in that sense i guess getting into teaching would be the right option for you and surviving flourishing and prospering as an educator would be the best uh, thing you can ever get in your life like i would i, w- I would like to uh, join in on this on what you said or uh, change makers it is very important that our educators understand that they are the change makers not directly maybe but also indirectly because a person of the student life of a person has a huge impact on how that person progresses ahead in life So it is very important yes. that that student life is is you know enhanced 
an experience. The, the experience of the student life is enhanced, and that can only be done by a good teacher, by a good educator. Yes, a student. And the and the educator basically plays the role of a catalyst. Yes. You're very subtly inducing the yes. values, the skills, everything that you want. And yes. when the child grows up, the child is a refined individual. Yes. The child knows why am I even in this society, and what is my role and contribution towards the society. So educators are not only change makers themselves, but they are also the people who you know mm. bring uh, bring ahead or they create the next change makers in the society. Very so much. I would say my teachers. I was really blessed to have all my teachers in my life. I would always be thankful, like just thanking them is not enough because it is all due to their teaching, due to their uh, guidance, due to their facilitation that I am here today. And when I when I when I when I mention about teachers, it would include my mother, my sister, my brother, my dad, because they were my first teachers at home to teach me values and the entire belief system. Right. coming towards school and then the college and then the university and every little uh, interaction that i had i have had with any individual who has taught me something really useful i am thankful to them right. because the clarity with which i am into this profession i am like i am happy right. i am satisfied and i always look forward to do more and i am not here just because i didn't have any other option To be yeah, it's because you want to be. This is exactly, exactly. where you aspire to. Be. Yes, very much. Yeah. And I would also like to mention that for a person to be great, that person needs to have great educators or great people who give them, you know, who pass on great values, like yes. uh, like in our mythology or say or in in all these all the stories of the great fighters that we've learned about Shivaji yeah. Maharaj or in our mythologies Arjuna. What all these people? What we learned was Shivaji Maharaj wouldn't have been himself if, if he hadn't been, you know, taught by his mother. If he if he exactly. wasn't given those values by his mother. So in Marathi, they say that Shivaji Maharaj Ghadle Nasse, the Jija Bai, his mother, wouldn't can can he tell a Ghadaula Nasse? So his mother exactly. created Shivaji Maharaj. That is why Shivaji Maharaj was so great. No doubt, he was individually a great person. But since that young age. Exactly. He was always taught the right things to do, or how to go about things, the life lessons, the values that his mother gave. And same went on with Arjuna, Drona Charya, his guru, was always there to you know teach him those right lessons. That is, that is how these mm. great people came into being because they had great guru. That is the importance of. And see if I if I can link it to an analogy, uh, Sonal, yes, it's me. about clay. Clay on its own is yeah. shapeless. There is no form. There is no shape. There is no utility. Yeah. It takes the form of a pot, a beautiful pot. Right. But the one who, the one who molds it into a pot, gives its shape, and makes it, uh, uh, makes it functioning. That that individual is more important. The potter is more important. The pot is going to do its work. Yeah. But the one who molds it, as you clearly said, is more important. more important. And I guess if we have if we have passionate educators in our It's country, uh, in in our global context, trust me, Sonal, the world would be such a better place to live. And we all want to live happily. We all want to live a prosperous life. We all want to live a stress-free life. When will it come? When the education. Towards our current generation will go in the right manner. For you know, some reason, I feel like mentioning that even my mindset or say my thought process has been, you know, uh, like changed a little bit after this interview. Because now, after talking to you, I realize the the huge role, the pivotal role that a guru plays, a teacher, a mentor, yeah. an educator plays in a person's life. Because. Hmm. as we go on in life like i mentioned what how we go about life or uh, instances in life or how we deal with certain situations circumstances comes from our experience as a kid somewhere mm. it is wired inside our mind all the things that we Very thought much. or the experiences that we had Very much. and that is that It's is how we want to cope you have been conditioned to the that that, yes. that right. experience right. Yeah. What an absolutely beautiful interview, Akash. You have really opened my eyes as to how the education system can really be better. Because we 
honestly thinking we all have been thinking how can our education system be better because as the time is passing and the technology is developing the society is developing it is very important that our students that the next generation has has that no equipment not just technology wise but like mind their you know yeah. brain wise their knowledge wise yes. the the equipment that they need to you know go on ahead in life that is very yes. important and that is only what an educator can do very much very well said after what you said thank you for coming here on kyy and sharing your experience opening our eyes making us understand how important education the role of education is in not just the person mm. right but like collective responsibility as you said but mutually between one person with another and the society as a whole yes <laughs> it was amazing having you here on this platform with us akash my pleasure we honor to have you here thank you for sharing your journey and we so guys we will be uh, attaching akash's uh, linkedin handle down below in the description box do check it out do connect with him he is an educator he is a change maker and he is a revolutionary that we need in our society in our world right now we need educators like him thank you akash thank you sonal have a great evening ahead you too